Welcome everyone. We will now reconvene the special city council meeting. Madam city attorney, do we have anything to report on closed session action? Item number one, the uh, city council gave direction uh, regarding the interim city attorney. Items two, Recording three. Recording in progress. Items two, three, and four, the city council gave direction to its labor negotiators. And that ends the closed session report. The special city council meeting is now adjourned. The time is 6.37 p.m. I would now like to call to order the regular city council meeting. City Clerk Duarte, do you, will you please take roll? Yes, Mayor. Council Member Prometa? Present. Council Member Trujillo? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Alvarez? Present. And Mayor Pacheco? Present. Now I would like to call up Father Samuel Ward from St. Raymond Church. I brought a fan club today, our third graders from St. Raymond School, who will be honored tonight as well too, which is wonderful. Happy Easter to everyone, just in the second week of this glorious Easter season. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, you have revealed your glory to all nations. God of power and might, wisdom and justice, through you authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment is decreed. Assist with your spirit of counsel and fortitude, the President of these United States, that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to your people over whom he presides. May he encourage due respect for virtue and religion. May he execute laws with justice and mercy. May he seek to restrain crime, vice, and immorality. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct the deliberations of Congress and shine forth in all the proceedings and laws framed for our rule and government. May they seek to preserve peace, promote national happiness, and continue to bring the blessings of liberty and equality. We pray for the governor of this state, for the members of the legislature, for judges, all elected officials, especially our Downey City Council members and all in city government, and all others who are entrusted to guard our political welfare. May they be enabled by your powerful protection to discharge their duties with honesty and ability. We likewise commend to your unbounded mercy all citizens and residents of the United States that we may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance, observance of your holy law. May we be preserved in union in that peace, peace which the world cannot give. And after enjoying the blessings of this life, be admitted to those which are eternal. Wait, we pray to you who are Lord and God forever and ever. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And congratulations again to our third graders from St. Raymond School who are going to be honored for their service, especially during Thanksgiving. They visited our elderly, one of the convalescent homes, sang for them and made placemats. So third grade, St. Raymond's. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Blessings, everyone. Thank you. Now I would like to invite up Erica Gonzalez and Marvin Connell to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's give them a round of applause. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may all be seated. Next up on our agenda is City Council Member Announcements, Request for Future Agenda Items, and Conference Meeting Reports. I will start off to my far left with uh, Council Member Trujillo. Good evening, everybody, and welcome um, to your City Council Meeting. This is an opportunity for us as residents and neighbors to come together and work on the issues pending at hand. Um, I want to thank many of you who have reached out to me um, with all the concerns that we're having with staffing. We are a city in transition, um, and we will communicate with you updates on filling in the most 
uh, I think, important positions right now in terms of filling are the interim city manager and the interim city attorney. We're having special meetings starting tomorrow to get to the work of selecting those positions. Meanwhile, we encourage you to continue to communicate with us on any issue, no matter how minor you think it might be, M. Trujillo at downyca.org. I want to welcome my Kiwanis family, in particular, our president who's celebrating his birthday. Stephen, happy birthday, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Stephen uh, graduated from Downey High School. He was a member of the Key Club. I was a member of a Keystone Club, also uh, founded by the San Francisco Kiwanis Club. I was a beneficiary of the Kiwanis and always knew that when it was my turn to select a service club that I would be a Kiwanian. I'm an honor, I am honored to be your Kiwanian brother and I welcome you to our council chambers. I always give credit to Kiwanis. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why I'm here in this seat is because of uh, the, the values that Kiwanis taught me uh, as I was a kid. So I'm forever grateful to Kiwanis, all hell Kiwanis. Uh, one of our Kiwanian brothers in particular, who is always good to see is my public works commissioner, Mr. Ephraim Sanchez and his lovely wife, Mel Sanchez. Longtime Downey uh, residents who uh, over time became friends. And uh, Mr. Sanchez knows how much I love the city. He's entrusted with public works, sir, is a huge, huge uh, commitment. I know I was out there today uh, looking for certain public works issues. Uh, I'll be sending in a lengthy list, not only to public works, uh, but also to code enforcement. I want to talk about our reputation as a city. When I first moved here 30 years ago, Downey was always known as a very strict city. Something has changed, and I'm, and I'm concerned uh, in the area of code enforcement. I'm seeing people parking their cars in lawns. Uh, it, that's just not acceptable. More litter in our streets. I mean, people are not cutting their beautiful lawns. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Don't be surprised, Downey residents, if you start getting some nasty letters in the mail. They're probably because I passed by your house and there was something that concerned me. So I'm going to be asking code enforcement to make more visits to certain homes. I want to be clear that it's not to be punitive. It's not about venue, uh, revenue production. It's not about citations. It's about you having Downey pride in the front of your home, people. I mean, I'm not trying to say let's be snitches, but we should not have to see people's personal belongings in the front of their house like it's a storage space. Your driveways shouldn't be so you can keep your old car that's clearly not been working for the last two years. Come on, people, let's get rid of the old cars. That's just not acceptable. So if you start getting the code enforcement letters, I hope you respond. Um, I also want to welcome my planning commissioner, Mr. Horacio Ortiz Jr. Thank you for being here today, sir. And congratulations to the 58th Assembly District Woman of the Year, Paula Mejia, who's also present here today. Congratulations, Paula. Thank you. Let's give her a, a big round of applause. Yeah. Mark McDaniel, always good to see you, sir. Um, Looking sharp, man. A retirement suiting you well, I hope. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Captain McDaniel served us for years uh, uh, with such courage to our city of Downey. He's uh, Downey homegrown and just a part of Downey pride. Good to see you, Mark. Um, congratulations to the Youth Academy graduates. And congratulations to past Mayor Rick Rodriguez. We just had the opening for the Veterans Center. It's a drop-in center where Veterans could drop in and get help, whether it's a hotel voucher for the day immediately or meals. Um, please spread the word. We have a drop-in center now available uh, during the library operating hours. Again, um, focusing on serving our veterans who served us so well. And thank you to all of you that visited the Downey Theater. Uh, we hope you appreciate what a beautiful landmark you have in your city. Uh, with that, um, that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Councilmember Fermetta. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everybody. It is so nice to see uh, a room full of wonderful community residents. Thank you for joining us tonight. I, I, you really deserve a round of applause. <laughs> um, I, I say engaged communities are strong communities. And um, so often, the strength of community um, gets forgotten. Um, and we become, as uh, Council Member Trujillo indicated, cities in transition. Um, sometimes cities are destabilized in a matter of one year after 60 years of stability. And I think we take things for granted as a community. But uh, tonight, I am glad to see all of you here engaged, and I hope that as we head into the midterm elections, that as communities um, in general, not just Downey, that we can really look at uh, our local governments as places that um, represent us and look at uh, individuals running for office and make the right decisions. Um, Downey is a great community, is a great place to be. Uh, the mayor and I had the opportunity earlier today to be here for a few hours uh, after a two-year hiatus. We welcomed uh, about 50 or 60 students from four different high schools uh, for the Student Government Day. And it was a great opportunity to see our Downey High, Columbus, uh, Warren, and uh, San Matthias and Pius high schoolers here uh, learning about civic engagement. Um, we had a wonderful time. I had the opportunity to attend uh, the Downey Police and Fire Luncheon uh, just a few days ago. And I want to recognize uh, publicly once again, and I know that uh, this has been covered in social media platforms, but um, Police Officer Justin uh, Prentice, who is the Police Officer of the Year, and uh, Firefighter of the Year, Ted Waldron. Uh, these these individuals serve our community with distinction, and I just want to thank them uh, once again for their service. And I want to thank our fire chief and our police chief for your dedication and your commitment to our community. Thank you. Uh, I had the opportunity. Yes, they deserve a round of applause. I had the opportunity of, uh, as uh, being in the executive board for NALEO, the National Association of Latino Elected Officials, um, I'm on the executive board as treasurer, and I had the opportunity to attend uh, the first in-person meeting um, the last two years. I had the that pleasure last week uh, as uh, we traveled to Chicago. And we also uh, attended the Policy uh, Institute on Emergency Preparedness. Um, as many of you know, my day job has to do with emergency management and disaster response. And I was a panelist um, with other elected officials discussing um, building resiliency and the path forward. Uh, COVID-19 and the response has not been kind to any of us. And as elected officials, believe it or not, uh, our mental health and, and self-care is critical for us to be able to continue serving our communities. Um, the, the unrealistic expectations sometimes of communities and, and the um, unknown, the, the issues that we faced over the last two years really took a toll on electeds across the country. And so as a, as a member of the disaster management uh, team, but also as an elected, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, present uh, during the Naleo uh, Policy Institute. I also had uh, a the opportunity to attend the 67th annual uh, iridescent ball uh, given by the Assistance League of Downey. And perhaps many of you are familiar with the Assistance League, is one of over 30 organizations, nonprofit organizations that serve our community. And that's what makes our community a strong uh, city. Uh, as council member, uh, my council colleague mentioned, uh, there is the Veterans Reintegration Center open now in our Downey Library. And this is open to all veterans and their families, regardless of where 
you what branch of the military you have served. This is the first uh, reintegration center of its kind in the LA region, and it is now open on Mondays from 1 to 6 p.m., as well as Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Downey Library. Um, I would like to... Um, express that while I was not able to attend the one day of service on Saturday, I am happy to uh, report 300 fruit trees were given out to community members that wanted them. And I have a couple of uh, items for uh, staff. I know that we are facing some changes. I, I do want to also mention to you that I had scheduled a public town hall for this Thursday. And because of the priorities at hand, uh, we have a special council meeting scheduled tomorrow. And I invite all of you and those of you on Zoom and on YouTube to attend. We will be interviewing and discussing the appointment for uh, council member for this district two. And that will be tomorrow um, here in the council chambers at 530. Um, please join us. Um, Last, I will ask our, of course, our police department to continue to, with speed enforcement, uh, I think we've, we've uh, realized that continues to be an issue in our main thoroughfares, uh, Florence, Lakewood, uh, Firestone, and I know we, we stretch uh, a significant um, space, but we really need to look at Florence from Lakewood to the 605, um, uh, Imperial from um, uh, Imperial from uh, Lakewood also uh, all the way to, uh, what is it, Old River School Road. Um, there are segments there that are very, very um, bad in terms of speeding. And Lakewood between uh, Florence and uh, Imperial. Um, also regarding uh, public works, I think it's been mentioned, uh, we are embarking in a very aggressive uh, street pavement plan. And please be patient with us. There's a lot of streets uh, over the next several weeks. In fact, it's happening right now. Uh, they are under construction and we are doing uh, thank you public works and thank you city staff and city manager and council colleagues for uh, approving this and moving forward uh, with a street management pavement plan. Um, there is a young, uh, gentlemen in this uh, in this uh, council chamber today and I know that um, I would like to call on him he is a boy scout and would you please stand up he's from district 4 uh, thank you for joining us tonight and this young man <laughs> this young man um, emailed me a few days ago I uh, hadn't had the opportunity to email him back, but he emailed me about our, our our bike lanes. And I did share with him, we do have a bike master plan. And uh, again, I want to applaud this young man's um, uh, civic minus and his, uh, and of course his his dad for being here with us this evening. Um, it takes uh, people that are interested in their community to be here and to be engaged. Uh, we continue to look at this bike master plan. Uh, many people want us to proceed with that. Um, others sometimes do not get very happy when we take out a traffic lane <laughs> for for bikes, but we are cognizant uh, of, of of that issue. Um, and uh, lastly, thank you, Delfino, for. Uh, the work that is being done uh, in terms of uh, street repavement projects. And I do want to echo my council colleague, we do need to uh, make sure that code enforcement continues to look at our neighborhoods. Um, there is a lot of cars parked on lawns, and uh, as you know, um, the the trash and uh, furniture continue to be uh, placed outside and uh, that needs to be taken care of. Uh, lastly, 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 um, there is a a resident from District 4 that came the last council meeting, and he discussed, uh, or he told us, an alarming issue with drones, and drones being flown um, around his neighborhood at different times of the night. Uh, he just emailed me last night. Uh, he was, uh, his, his family uh, in the neighborhood he lives on is being targeted, and this drone is being flown at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So I really want to, apparently our police department has been called out uh, several times. I do would like staff to look at an ordinance uh, to take care of drones. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, forgive me for my lengthy comments. That will conclude them. Thank you. And uh, next up we have uh, Mayor Pro Tem Alvarez. Hi, good evening, everyone. I just want to say thank you to everyone that is here, and um, that concludes my comments. Thank you. 
Uh, so I just want to start off by uh, thanking all of you for participating and coming to our council meeting. It's always nice to see a packed house. Uh, it's nice to see you all involved and engaged in our Downey City Council. Uh, our, my Kiwanians are in the back. Thank you. And also in the front, and also in the way in the front, my, my neighbor. Uh, I do also want to uh, thank um, the executive director, Michael, of the Chamber of Commerce, Michael Calvert. Hello, in the back. We also have Gangs Out of Downey uh, President, Hector Sosa. We have former mayor, Kirk Cartosian, in the back. And I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, Burbank uh, Unified School Board member, Dr. Armand Aga 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 Aganian. He's in the back. So I attended a lot of events in the last uh, several weeks, so I'll just touch upon them briefly. On April 16th, I attended Brunch with the Bunny at Golden Park. The Downey Theater had an open house. I was there as well. State Gallery had an event, uh, a paint day event, um, also on April 16th. So if you have not gone to State Gallery, please check them out. They're open. They have a lot of fun events for the family. Uh, they're on social media. Uh, so please follow them uh, for updated events that they will be having. I also attended the grand opening of the Veterans Center. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the Veterans Center is located at the Downey Library, and it is open to all veterans. This is uh, the first in the country where a veteran can go into the library to visit the, uh, the center, the Veterans Center, and seek for help, uh, be it housing, being it food, whatever needs that they have, they can go to the Veterans Center. It is open Mondays from 1 to 6 p.m., uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please share it with any veterans that you may know who are in need of these services. I also attended the Downey Police and Fire Luncheon. It was a pleasure attending the luncheon and recognizing our um, Firefighter of the Year, Ted Waldrop, and also Police Officer of the Year, Corporal Justin Prentice. Uh, so a huge thank you to both our Downey Fire and our Downey Police Department. This is what makes our city a special city, having our own police and fire department. These are exceptional men and women who work really hard every day uh, to keep our community safe. So please give them a huge round of applause. I also attended OLPH's uh, Women's Guild Spring Tea, uh, recognizing the Women's Guild for their 70th year anniversary. And Downey PD held its first, first Youth Academy. Uh, they had a graduation ceremony um, this, last, this week, I believe. Um, my days are all mixed up. It's a busy, busy time for me. Uh, but this was a, a special opportunity for our youth to uh, be involved with our Downey Police Department, see what they do on a daily basis. Um, we had students from Downey High, from Warren High. We even had a student from Paramount. Uh, so it was nice to see these students uh, wanting to learn what Downey Police officers do on a daily basis. And then last Saturday, I attended the Downey One Day of Service and our Arbor Day tree planting event with um, our Girl Scout troops. And last Saturday, I was also at the Southeast District Bar Association Gala. SEDBA uh, is what it's known for, uh, and it's um, an organization of attorneys and judges. They are here in the Southeast area, and the focus is on community events, food giveaways, um, and also youth engagement programs. It was really nice to see uh, my colleagues. I'm also an attorney as well. So it was nice to see my colleagues here, uh, fr uh, friends who are, who are judges. And uh, we recognized different awardees from Judicial Officer of the Year, Attorney of the Year, and Judicial Assistant of the Year. So this was uh, a fun event that was held in Whittier. 
And then I also attended Student Government Day. It was probably the happiest morning uh, that I've had in a while. I really love talking to the students, hearing what projects they have in mind, uh, from having a skating rink here in the city of Downey to having a botanical garden. Uh, it's just nice to see the kind of questions they ask, uh, the, the statements that they make. These are really smart individuals. Uh, they even had a mock council meeting. So we had students sit up here and conduct a council meeting. Uh, so it's just, it was really a fun event because as a Kiwanian, my heart is, it belongs to our youth, to uh, being a mentor for them and to seeing them succeed. Um, so that's why I'm glad my, my Kiwanians, my brothers and sisters are here uh, for Kiwanis, uh, Hail Kiwanis. I know we also have some Rotarians here in the audience as well, and we love and appreciate our Rotarians as well. Uh, so thank you again um, for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we do have a lot of awards and recognitions. So I'm going to, well, before I forget, I have one event uh, that's coming up May 7th, Touch a Truck. It's going to be at Independence Park from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. This is a great opportunity to bring your kids to Independence Park so they can explore work uh, public works trucks, police patrol vehicles, fire engines, construction equipment, and more. We will also have an um, emergency rescue demonstration. Our canine unit will be there. So please share, the, uh, share this information with uh, family and friends so that they can, um, they can join us on May 7th. And pickleball courts. I know there's, a, there's um, people that would love to play pickleback, pickleball. And so we have that coming up as well at Furman Park on Saturday, May 7th, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. And then it will again be at, at um, Independence Park on May 21st. So two dates, pickleball, May 7th, and May 21st, first off, Furman Park, second, Independence Park. So please share that information as well. You can find all of this information on our uh, City of Downey social media page. So please follow us, either Facebook or Instagram. And that concludes my comments. And now off to presentations. So the first item that I have up, I would like to invite up three amazing individuals. Former Mayor Kirk, Kirk Cartosian, join me up here. We also have, yes, we also have uh, Dr. Armand, and, and we also have the President of the Southern California Armenian Democrats, uh, Leonard Manokian. Oh, I said that. So this uh, proclamation is in remembrance of the Armenian genocide. I have here before me a proclamation uh, which reads, whereas the extermination of more than one and a half, one half million Ar Armenians by the Ottoman Turks and the deporta deportation of countless others is remembered every year on April 24th since 1915 as Armenian Martyrs Day. And whereas between 1915 and 1923, 1923, Armenians witnessed the slaughter of their relatives and the loss of their ancestral homeland. And whereas modern Turkey continues to deny and distort the facts of this first genocide of the 20th century, and further honors the perpetrators of that crime against humanity as national heroes. And whereas the continued denial of the Armenian genocide by the present day Turkish government deprives the Armenian people of the rights to their history.
And whereas the Armenian people have not received reparations for their losses, and whereas ancestral Armenian lands have not been returned to the Armenian people. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Blanca Pacheco, on behalf of the City Council and citizens of Downey, do hereby designate April 24th of each year as a day of remembrance of the Armenian genocide. And I have here before me um, our former mayor, Kirk Kartilzian, and also Dr. Armand, who sits on the Burbank uh, School Board. And also we have the president of the Southern California Armenian Democrats, who are here to receive this proclamation. So let's give them a round of applause. And since our former mayor always does an amazing job as uh, explaining this day of remembrance, I will hand it over to him. Okay, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for, for, to the council as well and staff for participating in this very important uh, acknowledgement every year. Uh, the city is, of Downey has been doing it for almost 20 years and I uh, appreciate the current council for continuing that. Uh, the, as many know, the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1923 was the first uh, full genocide of the modern era, the first of the 20th century. Uh, so as representatives of the Armenian community, but that we are very strong, uh, you probably know a few of us throughout Southern California. Uh, we're proud Americans and we're proud uh, Armenians. Uh, but uh, history repeats itself. Uh, there are still many deniers today. today. Uh, the Armenians are, are surely not the only peoples who have been uh, subjects to genocide, uh, and it continues even in this day. So we appreciate the council, and hopefully it's uh, something that the youth can learn about uh, so that we can uh, avoid it and, uh, and act accordingly to, uh, to make sure deniers are educated properly. Enjoy. Thank you, um, um, and my apologies for having my back to our distinguished elected officials. Um, again, my name is Dr. Armand Agakanyan. I am a member of the Burbank Board of Education, and I do want to thank the council and all the city of uh, members of the city of Downey for inviting us to be here. Um, you know, uh, we have talked about the Armenian genocide and we always hear the word never again. Um, last year alone, uh, some of you witnessed uh, our land was attacked again by the Turkish forces and the Azeri forces in Nagorno-Karabakh. Now part of it is now being taken. So as we were talking about this and as we were commemorating the 106th anniversary, and as President uh, Biden acknowledged the Armenian genocide finally after 106 years. Let's hear it for President Biden. And uh, thank you. Yeah. well, yes, you don't. But um, our people were being slaughtered. Over 2,500 families, as we speak, are, are have been slaughtered in the Nagorno-Karabakh, and the world has turned a blind eye. And now today, you're seeing what's happening in a neighboring country in Ukraine with the Soviet forces. So I hope that, you know, this will continue, that your grandchildren and their grandchildren will continue to commemorate this day. Because we, will, we have to remember that if we, forget, if we forget about the past and we don't remember the first genocide of the 20th century, others will happen. So I want to thank all of you for being here from the bottom of my heart. And I love your city and what a beautiful city hall this is. So thank you very much for the honors and again, uh, remember that we must remember the past. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Mayor, uh, honorable members of the City Council, uh, dear residents, thank you very much for this uh, proclamation. I am grateful for it. We are all grateful for it. Uh, I would like to bring it down uh, just a little bit the first act necessary before justice is accomplished is individual human compassion for the misery and uh, uh, unhappiness of others. Compassion, personal compassion is the first step before we uh, reach justice. 
Um, it is acts like this that speak to the compassionate heart of every individual who stands behind it. Um, thank you very much. We do this not only for ourselves, but for the entire community and for the entire uh, human race. And you can start applauding now. Thank you very much. Okay, we have three more presentations. Uh, next up, we have a proclamation for a Teacher Appreciation Week from May 1st through the 7th. For this one, I'd like to invite up uh, Suleima, Suleima Castillo. This proclamation is now in appreciation of our teachers and all the hard work that they do every day for our students uh, here in Downey and throughout the state of California. So I have this proclamation which reads, whereas teachers mold our future leaders through guidance and education, and whereas teachers encounter students of widely different backgrounds and beliefs, and whereas our country our, future, our country's future depends upon providing quality education to all students. And whereas teachers spend countless hours preparing lessons, evaluating progress, counseling, coaching students, and performing community service. And whereas teachers emphasize the importance of the six pillar, pillars of character, which are located here in our council chambers. Uh, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. To teach them ethical values to guide their choices. And whereas Teacher Appreciation Week serves to honor our teachers and recognize the lasting contributions they make to our lives. And now, therefore, I, Blanca Pacheco, Mayor of the City of Downey, do hereby designate the, May, the week of May 1st through the 7th of 2022 as Teacher Appreciation Week and strongly encourage all members of our community to join in expressing appreciation to our teachers for their dedication and devotion for their work. Let's recognize them this week and always say thank you to our teachers for all their hard work. So thank you. Um, thank you. I know that um, being a teacher, it's a passion that, you know, my my principal and mentor said that, you know, you have to love what you do in order to provide for the students daily. Um, you know, we're not just teachers, we're their counselors, we're their advocates while they're with us. You know, we, their parents entrust us to be with them, to help mold them, you know, academically, socially, emotionally, and spiritually for us as well. So I appreciate everyone and thank you. Thank you. 
Now from teachers, we're gonna segue to students. So I'd like to invite up the St. Raymond School third grade class. Can I also invite up uh, anybody here on behalf of St. Raymond's, have everybody come up. Principals here. Wow, you're even lined up. This is amazing. <laughs> so this uh, special recognition is uh, being provided to uh, the third graders seen before you. Uh, for something remarkable that they did uh, last year. And I believe we have a slideshow presentation. So we're gonna do a presentation. Um, are we gonna have any one of you uh, speak in with this presentation? No? Okay, we'll just show the slideshow. Can I have one of the students read me that quote? Who wants to read me that quote? People will never forget what you said. People will never forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So can I have one of the teachers come up? And uh, tell us a little bit about what our third grade students did. Mm -hmm. um, so again, my principal, Mrs. Rodarte, she had an idea. And we obey, <laughs> we, we go with it. You know, she's always giving us great ideas. She wanted to, you know, have a community service for our children. And so uh, for, during religion, we're blessed and able to do that. We taught them. I taught the lesson that God gives us talents and how can we use our talents to praise God and to um, bring joy to others. So it was around the holidays. The kids thought about the people most in need, people in retirement homes who possibly don't go home for the holidays, and they wanted to bring them hope, joy, and laughter. So they decided to do a placemat and include a quote from a Bible, some, a, a humor, some, a joke, and um, some uh, inspiration. So we had a placement party. We made 70, 180, some 87 placemats for the Downey Retirement Home. And then they practiced and sang songs because that was their talent. They were good drawers, colors, and they had good voices. So um, we practiced songs and then we got to deliver it to the reti Downey Retirement Home. The placemats, which they used for their Thanksgiving dinner, and then they also sang songs. So it was a great time and I'm really proud of them. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Class, if you had to describe Mrs. Rodarte in one.
So I just want to say uh, thank you to our third grade students uh, for doing such a wonderful thing in the community. Uh, so many uh, seniors are, are in retirement homes and, and you know, they're, they're sometimes alone. And just having that placemat and having some, being like knowing that somebody actually cares about them, took the time to visit them and sang to them is something very important. And so giving back to the community is always something special. So I want to commend our third graders, their teacher, the principal, uh, for guiding them, but most importantly, you, you all for uh, doing the right thing and for um, caring about others because that's what makes us special, we care. So thank you. Let's give them another round of applause. So I have here with me a certificate of recognition. If I can have the principal, please help me provide them. Abigail Herrera. Ricardo Carrillo. Aldo Avalos. Raquel Maya, Gia Lopez, Christopher Rizzo, Elaine Pelayo, Lawrence Carbone, Jack Spicelli, Austin Montion, Valeria Duran, Zoe Sarate, David Saragosa, And our third grade teacher, Sulema Castillo, and our music teacher, Mr. De La Rosa. And I also have some uh, downy uh, lapel pins so that each and every one of you can wear it with pride. There you go.
Congratulations, boys. Great project. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we have a, a special video uh, in respect to the, the children, our third grade class. So let's start the video. Because uh, every um, great community event and every great uh, project begins with its leadership, I also want to invite up the principal of St. Raymond's. <laughs> the principal, uh, Mrs. Rodarte, uh, has done such an incredible job over at St. Raymond's. St. Raymond's. Uh, I have had the pleasure of knowing her for years. Uh, I always get invited to um, the career day. And every time I see her, I see how much of a passion she has for these students, how much she's concerned about the students and the parents. And just the love is there. And her staff, the kids, everyone at St. Raymond's loves her. And because of that, we are going to recognize her with the Mayor's Impact Award uh, because of the impact she's had here in the city of Downey and for our youth, as was as exemplified by our third grade um, students. It all starts with leadership. It all starts with um, the principal over at St. Raymond's teaching our youth to be kind to each other and to help each other during tough times. So, I want to thank you, and I believe we have another special video um, just showing how special you are. Third grade class, if you had to describe Mrs. Rodarte in one word, what would it be? Kind, joyful, stylish, brave, brave, <laughs> generous, beautiful, supportive, helpful, nurturing, organized. We love you, Mrs. Rodarte. From the class of 2022. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for helping with school events. Thank you for being a strong leader. Thank you for being our role model and inspiring us. Thank, Thank you, Mrs. Regarte.
And thank you, Mr. Darcy, for all the support that you give the faculty and staff and everything that you do and keeping also our community and our parents safe. As well. How has Mrs. Rodarte helped you in your professional development? Mrs. Rodarte has always been very supportive and in one particular instance, she's helped me with my ELA curriculum in a collaborative way. And in particular, we did ELA um, uh, literary circles and my students love that lesson plan. For me, it has been support always with lesson planning and giving resources and how um, she can support me in the classroom as well. She's taught me that to lead by example and to always think of my students and how to best teach to their style, to think outside the box, be innovative and creative. Thank you, Mrs. Rodarte, for your care, support, guidance, and love. Thank, Thank you, and congratulations. Congratulations, Mrs. Rodarte, on your award. You deserve this award for all the hard work and dedication you put into St. Raymond's. And I really love being part of the office team. Hi, I can't think of anyone better to get this award but you. First of all, let me start off by saying I love you so, so much. And I am so beyond proud of you for this award. On behalf of the parents at St. Raymond School, we want to thank you for all your dedication, all your hard work. I know all the hours you put into working. You're here late. I always tell you to go home. Um, but I want to thank you. You made this school amazing. I've been at the school for seven years now, and I can't think of anyone better running this school and the safety of our kids. And in a personal matter, you know how much you mean to me, and I love you so much, and I am so, so proud of you. Good job. the Mayor's Impact Award, recognizing you for the impact that you've done in our community. Thank you. And I have a, a special lapel pin for you. Uh, it says uh, Mayor's Impact Award on the lapel pin. Thank you so much. This is for you, and this is a special one for you. Oh, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. Do you want to say anything to the students? <laughs> oh, I can. <laughs> She's amazing. I've been at um, St. Raymond's as pastor for nine months, but she saw our Catholic school through COVID, maintained enrollment, didn't lose any students, and graduated a huge eighth grade class of 30 students last year. And we began with an enrollment increase this year. And so she's been an amazing blessing for me as a new pastor um, coming in, and we are in great hands um, with her as our principal and to her family as she's planning her daughter's quinceanera for this Saturday as well too. So she's wearing a thousand hats right now. Um, Greg and Greg and, and Emma, thank you for lending your mom so many hours to us at St. Raymond's. And I tell her to go home early every night as well too. <laughs> I want to say thank you to the mayor and to the council members for this honor. And um, of course, uh, I'd like to thank uh, our St. Raymond community. My heart is with St. Raymond, and uh, I, I'm speechless, so I don't know exactly what to say because I'm super surprised. And I don't, I usually control everything, so this is normal for me. But I just am beyond humbled. I. Um, it's a special day for me. I didn't know this was happening, but I had my parents join me to my first St. Raymond event. And um, I was three, and I wanted to be a teacher, I remember. And uh, I just, uh, I learned everything from my mom and my dad. And they supported me, and they worked really hard to get me through Catholic education, um, no matter what it took, because they knew I had a dream. And so from that point on, I uh, committed and so to my students, uh, to serving others, and I tell you all the time how much I love you, and it really is something that I believe in, and I've always wanted to serve you, parents and students, and our school father um, with dignity, with faith, and with passion, and I want you to know that you're special always, and of course, a special thank you to my family, to my husband and my kids who sacrifice a lot of our family time um, because they know I love 
what I do so much. And so um, I couldn't do any of this without the support of my family and um, without the support of the incredible school that I have, that I'm blessed to be part of. So thank you, Father Sam, for believing in me. And this is an incredible honor. Thank you so much. I do what I do because I, I love my faculty and staff. I love my students and my parents. And I just love to serve. So thank you for allowing me to serve Downey and St. Raymond and my family. Thank you so much. I forgot to mention my sisters here too, so thank you to my sister. <laughs> Uh, so now continuing on to helping kids. Uh, the next uh, recognition is being provided to our businesses uh, that participated in uh, the Shop with the Cop event. We'll take a couple of minutes. Okay, we just have uh, one more presentation. It is a um, special presentation. It's to recognizing those individuals and those businesses uh, that participated in Shop with a Cop. Uh, for this uh, recognition, I would like to uh, invite up um, our president for the Downey Police Officers Association, uh, Ralph Diaz. So uh, this, this event uh, started in 2019. It's an event with our Downey Police Officers and our youth. It's an event in which our Downey Police Officers take the time out of their day during the holidays to take kids to Walmart, take them shopping, wrap their gifts, have that positive interaction 
with these young ones, with their family. Uh, this is a special event that when it started, it was amazing. It really was what makes our Downey Police such a great police department. Each and every one of them have a heart of gold. Uh, they're not just out there keeping us safe, but they're out there being community partners. Uh, they're out there being engaged. And this is just one of those things that they do that's so special in our community and that we don't see outside of our city. So I just want to, I know today isn't really a day where we thank our police officers, where we should be thanking you, uh, our partners, but it should also be a day in which we thank our Downey police officers for everything that they do day in, day out, and for this wonderful event. Uh, so before I hand it over, I do have a special video that we'll be sharing to show you just how impactful this event is. So let's show the video. doesn't want to get recognized, uh, but this uh, vision, this thought came from uh, Sergeant Tim McCarthy. So let's give him a round of applause. Uh, but I will now have uh, Corporal Ralph Diaz uh, come up and say a couple of words, um, and then we will acknowledge and thank all of our community and business partners who helped make this um, bring this to fruition, so. Thank you, ma'am. So um, the video says it all. Uh, there, there's not a whole lot that we can say verbally. Um, it brings us uh, pleasure and joy, uh, giving back to the community, to the families. Um, we partnered with the school district. They provide us the children. Thanks to our community, all of our businesses, our council members, our chiefs for coming out, the fire chief for bringing out the rig. We appreciate everything. Um, and like uh, Mayor said, this wouldn't be able to occur without our, without my board, Sergeant Tim McCarthy. Come on up. <laughs> my secretary, Roger Sai, come on up. And this is the backbone to uh, to our department. She is now retired, but Lynette Williams, come on up. But thank you guys. We appreciate everything you guys do for us.
So I have here a certificate of recognition for Downey Penske Toyota. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here, but we do want to acknowledge and thank them. Uh, we also have a certificate of recognition for Downey Kiwanis Foundation. So if I can have all the Kiwanians come up. We also have uh, Ephraim Sanchez here, another Kiwanian. Yeah. Tropicana, uh, we want to provide them with this recognition, even though they couldn't be here. <laughs> Downey Unified School District. Premier Fitness. Woo! Always looking sharp. <laughs> Velasco Law Group. We have Chick-fil-A. Gangs out of Downey. Starbucks. Titan Toe. We have Walmart, Walmart 4132 who can be here. And last but not least, Trusted Source Transportation and Logistics. Who could that be? <laughs> so thank you to all these individuals who made this event possible. If it wasn't for all of you, each and every one of you, we wouldn't have been able to have done this fabulous event. Uh, the plan is to do it every year, correct? So the plan is to do it every year to make it better, bigger and better. Uh, so don't be surprised if uh, we reached out to more community members for your support for this great event. So again, I want to thank you all for your contribution and for that everything that you did to make this event possible. From the podium, behind the podium. <laughs> Good in this back. <laughs> I'm tall. All the short people in the front.
I will now take public comment on agenda, non-agenda, and consent calendar items next. Before we begin the uh, public comment period, I would like to remind members of the public that the city's meeting rules contained in the Downey Municipal Code prohibit any conduct that disrupts, disturbs, or interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Copies of the meeting rules are located in the back of the chambers. The City Council acknowledges the right of the public to address issues that are within the city's jurisdiction and the, invites the public to do so during the City Council meeting. However, this right must be balanced with the need of the City Council to conduct the public business in a fair and efficient manner, free from disruption or disturbance. Members of the audience who wish to address the City Council during public comment are reminded that the City's meeting rules prohibit yelling, whistling, booing, screaming, and any other outburst that disrupts or disturbs the meeting. Any conduct that interferes with or disrupts persons who are addressing the City Council. Any conduct that interferes with or disrupts Council members while they are speaking. And any other conduct that disrupts, disturbs, or interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Members of the audience violating the City's meeting rules after fair warnings shall be removed from the Council chambers. I remind the audience that pursuant to Penal Code Section 403, it is a misdemeanor for any person to willfully disturb or break up a public meeting. Those violating Penal Code Section 403 may be cited, I repeat, may be cited accordingly. Unless modified by the mayor, each speaker shall have four minutes to address the council regarding agenda, non-agenda, and consent calendar items. Pursuant to the Downey Municipal Code, the public period is limited to 30 minutes. I remind speakers that your comments be addressed to me not to any other council members or staff members. A language interpreter is available in person for those members of the public needing interpretation. City Clerk Duarte, have you received any correspondence to be in read into the record? Yes, Mayor, we do have one um, email that we received from Clara Cruz. We want to be protecting of people and business that degrade women and girls. They make money sexualizing them. Do not let Ojos Locos open a bar in Downey. Don't let trash come to our city. That is all, Mayor. Thank you. Members of the public wishing to address the city council may now come forward and form a line. So we have a million dollar pavement program going on for the last 10 years. And I guess all the measure R and Measure S money never had its opportunity to finish our pavement program now that Mr. Levas is leaving on July 1st. Is that hilarious? However, public issues should be uninhibited, robust, and wide open. And that it may well include venomous, caustic, and sometimes unpleasant, sharp attacks as you heard announced today by your mayor and assemblywoman wanting to censor, monitor your free speech. Residents of Downey, zooming in. Mr. Herman. So again. That's your first warning. So again, residents on the agenda, I bring my tattoos to illustrate that there is First Amendment protection. And not just in my words, but in your clothing. So on item seven, 42 USC 1983, politely, Mayor, thank you. And then we have item eight on housing, HHH, which we're all familiar with. I know what it's like to see veterans homeless. I know what it's like to see. Mr. Herman, please, homeless. face forward. Pardon me, ma'am? I'm on item eight. Face us. That well, is your second warning, face us. I have a mask on, so I am facing you. I am facing you. Again, the ordinance to establish an inclusionary housing program has not been effective. It has not been effective. It's gonna take us until 2026 to provide housing because I wanna be the only assembly woman, first lesbian, to become a part of Downey. Now, that's not a statement of untruth, but it's truth. And then again, ratify the bylaws for public committee and clergy. Well, 
I am the clergy. I'm going to pray to God in Romans 1, 26 through 27, that God hates homosexuality. Now, if I'm off topic about the Bible, talking about item nine, ratify public works committee on clergy with Rick Rodriguez, then call it out. Call it out. The Bible says that. Matthew 6, 9 through 11 reads, Let our kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven today. But God has not struck me down, for I am an angel of God. Not closer to the Son of God, but an angel of God. To condemn those who criminally corrupt our program, our city, small downy, through embezzlement, corruption, and just like the Pharisees and scribes of old, you put a man on a Christmas tree and named it Easter, holidays, Christmas, holidays. And that's why on ratifying the bylaws, Romans 1, 26 through 27 talks about homosexuality. Men with men and lesbos with lesbos. Christina Garcia. So I want to know for the record. I want to know. Is the mayor of Downey a lesbian? That's all we want to know. On the record. And here's my public testimony for the record. As you see, my time is now expired. Thank you, residents. For your Thank you, out. Mr. Herman. Have a white person. No, you can oh, proceed okay. forward. I never know with this this made up coronavirus thing. So, and Mike Greenspan, and I just wanted to brunch with the bunny on Passover. That's funny. Jesus had a Last Supper, never brunch with the bunny. After all, those of us who dropped out of Jewish Sunday school three times at two scab rabbi synagogues know better. Anyway. Now, there's this Ojos Locos, or whatever they call the place, I got a nickname for it, the Boob and Beaver Bar, because that's basically what it is. If, uh, if the people of Downey do not like it, remember something. The mayor of Downey is running for assembly. Show your appreciation. Six weeks from now, on June 7th or before, when you, I'm gonna be a little bit John Walshish. Anybody but Pacheco for assembly, because Downey has 40% of the district. So if you don't like what's going on in Downey, then don't promote the mayor of Downey to another office. She can do a fuck up job here. We don't need to send her to Sacramento to fuck it up worse. But who am I to say? After all, I don't live in Downey, and I'm not running for office in Downey. Um, not like your state senator, Bob Archuleta. I still live, live 5.4 miles from his Burbank sign. But I didn't run in Burbank. He ran in Burbank in a district he didn't win. Yabba dabba do, Fred Flintstone finds a district he doesn't have to live in to run. Well, why would he do that? Well, he's just afraid... Mr. Greenspan, please Hot. face me. I, mean, I guess Fred Flintstone's really Wilma, the political pussy, afraid, afraid to run against Kant Han. But after all, it's just another person whose daddy's name is on the Board of Supervisor building, and she has made it because of her daddy. If it were her own bimbo mentality, she would be finishing about as low as Englander, who finished fifth. When running for supervisor in the same district, Archuleta ran. At least Englander lived in the district. Uh, last I heard, he was living in prison and then a halfway house. Well, what's, what was that quote? People forget what you say. Well, a guy named Harry Nears out of Burbank, a member of St. Finbar Parish, said to me, quote, Go back to Florida, you Jew, unquote. I didn't forget it, because guess what, folks? This Jew is not going back to Florida, 
And I have a message for every one of those anti-Christ, Catholic, anti-Semitic people that would say that to me. I'm not going back to Florida. And I'm out here. Because if I go back to Florida, I got to apologize to a Klanner Baptist minister from the fucking Baptist in the Klan. He said something when I was a teenager, and I didn't believe him because he was a George Wallace for president voter. What a bigot, how prejudiced he was. But he turned out to be right. And it's very humbling for a Jew to have to admit to a Klanner Baptist from the fucking Baptist in the Klan, he was right, and I was wrong. What did he say that I have to admit to this day that he was right and I was wrong? What he said was, you anti-Christ Catholics have false doctrines. That's what he said. Going to hell for eating meat on Friday? My, what false doctrines y'all have. And this Jew will not go back to Florida. And I'll tell that to each and every one of you anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic. Thank you. Lee Squire, Vietnam era veteran, son, nephew of World War II, civil rights advocate. Good evening, Mayor and City Council, and to we the people of the city of Downey. First, April 28th is Holocaust Remembrance Day. I bring this up given that Downey has a Jewish temple. This is a day that no class of people should ever have been subjected to hatred. I want to hand a letter to the city clerk of a Holocaust survivor of the Jewish temple of Downey thanking World War II veterans. Second, National Police Week is May 15th to May 21st. I'm asking for a wreath proclamation and presentation at the Downey Police Memorial. Given hate directed at police, it is the children of our police officers who we are causing emotional distress to. I'm asking the children of the police officers to attend the presentation. Also, as of yesterday, FBI Director Ray stated that there is not enough attention to violence directed towards our police officers. We veterans need to be more vocal defending police officers across America, for they are defenders of the freedom of our city. Third, this week is National Crime Victims Week. I just want that noted for the public record. God bless America, God bless the nation of Israel, God bless our military and veterans, and God bless local policing and their families across America. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to start off, first of all, um, saying as a conservative voter, I am opposed to the nudie bar going up over on Firestone, uh, but I don't buy into the fact that people are doing it to support um, exploitation or their opposition to exploitation of girls. If they won't stand up for the illegal alien cartels and against those that are smuggling young girls across the border uh, and don't say a word about it. They seem to think that's okay. That's a contradictory uh, thought process and a contradictory statement. If you can't support the opposition of illegal aliens being brought in here and exploiting these young girls that are being raped and sold into sex slavery, that don't sit here and try to say that's okay, but not at the nudie bar over here. Don't say it, you have no credibility. Secondly, I'd like to say our police, I support our police, always have. I don't think our police are a systemic problem of racism in this country. I don't think there's one police officer on this force that goes into work with the thought of rounding up brown and black people on our streets to beat on them and to assassinate them. Not one. I just wanna make that position clear. And in light of that, as far as crime and police work go, they need some help. We need our council members to stand up individually and publicly support the recall of George Gascone. There's no excuse not to do that. 
This guy is an animal. He's a vile, vicious animal. And those that support his policies are just as vile as he is. I'm on the record for that. Also, I'd like to say that um, we have these mandates that are being uh, considered about by the extremist Democrats on this council and the Romney Republicans. They're all in the same group together. They are just waiting to put these mandates back on us again at the next variant that comes through. However, at the start of this thing, of their pandemic, or shamdemic, I should say, there was absolutely no proof or evidence that justified the shutting down of our businesses, our churches, our stay-at-home orders. There was absolutely no evidence to warrant those measures. Just, and they say, well, we we're learning about it. We, we were, it was unknown at that time. Well, if I was a, a traveler on a ship in the 13th century, I was told that if I rode my ship out to the edge of the horizon, I'd fall off the edge of the earth because it's flat. They believe that. They believe that without any evidence at all, but they believed it. And Socrates tried to help the Greek people at that time to being a little bit of enlightened. And what did they do to him? Because he disrupted the social order, they lopped his head off. They lopped his head off. So anyway, uh, we have to make our own decisions on these things. We know the policies that you support up here are not for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I am for freedom and liberty. I am for less taxation and rollback of regulations for our business. And our Chamber of Commerce needs to start getting on the ball and start representing that position. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Um, it's good to be here. Um, my name is Joaquin Beltran. Um, I'm running for Congress uh, in this beautiful district, California 42. Uh, yo soy Joaquin Beltran. Estoy corriendo para el Congreso en este distrito del 42. Um, and just like to uh, share a little bit about myself uh, to my community and introduce myself to those who uh, I haven't met yet. Um, so I I'm running. Uh, because we, we are at a, at a pivotal moment here uh, where we're building a foundation and it really matters in what direction we're building this foundation. And it's important that we build this foundation towards a better future. Uh, my story is one, it's probably common to, to many here. Uh, both my parents are from Mexico. Uh, they came to the United States with aspirations for the American dream. They met here, uh, not too far from here exactly. Um, and, and they were faced with the challenges that many face here. Uh, my father, he, he worked as a machine operator. Uh, my mother as a seamstress um, at a sweatshop in downtown. Um, and and you know, to her shock, that was not the American dream that she was looking for. And so she had the entrepreneurial spirit. So we, uh, she, she bought clothes downtown. And as a family, we went door to door and selling this clothes to make a living. But you know, like any, uh, any immigrant family, uh, we faced challenges. And, and we lost nearly everything a few times. Um, and along the way, uh, I remember driving here with her here in Downey and her saying, you know, I want to live here. I remember that. Uh, it was beautiful. It was right here on uh, Downey Avenue. And, and we did. Uh, when I was around 10 years old, we moved here. And eventually we built a, a small business. And uh, when I was roughly 18 years old, I was before the council at that time, um, urging the council to approve the, the plans for that business, it's Paramount Auto Center. Um, and, and along the way, she got sick because it, it was a huge ordeal. She asked me to drop out of school um, and uh, to run the business. And so that's what I did. I dropped out of school for a few years. Uh, and it changed my life because um, I knew what it meant to really um, be involved, um, and, and be involved with the community, um, re really help our family uh, out of this struggle, and um, and it changed my life. 
and what happened uh, along the way, I've just been trying to make a difference since. Um, recently, uh, going on three years now, I've been working on the pandemic, uh, trying to create safer environments, um, pushing legislation uh, to make sure that people have access to free masks, uh, that indoor spaces have better ventilation, filtration, um, so that testing is free. And we had a lot of accomplishments around, uh, along the way. Uh, but as you know, um, this year, uh, we are set to have nearly as many deaths as we did in the first year of the pandemic. And that's because the, the, the situation keeps changing. Um, and, 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 and what we need to do is make sure we're protecting our communities first and foremost. 300 deaths, 30 into the pandemic is unacceptable. So we really have to make sure our community has the resources. Um, because without that, without that stability, we can address the important issues of jobs, uh, of businesses that are going out, that can't uh, meet payroll, uh, making sure that homes are affordable and the cost of living uh, that is creating so much struggle for so many, and big issues like climate change that are gonna affect our generation. So I am working for a better future. If you'd like to join my campaign, please join me at JoaquinBaltran.com. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Zhang Li, and so I start. So enough is enough. Dear city council mayors and members, how could you support the event for the LGBT picnics? Even when transforming the meaning of rainbow, which is the original sign of the God's promise. Even you mentioned about six characters pillars earlier. Responsibility, respect, trustworthy, fairness, caring citizenship. When you praised of the teachers and our growing children, but really can you mention even these characters of what you are doing? Why were these characters placed here in the city hall? Let me speak a story that is probably well known to many of you. It's just an example of consequences, although there are, there are many issues. Your post. There was a news article, transgender, her name was Simon Lee Thomas, is destroying sports, official says. Why destroying? You know how hard professional swimmers exercise and make effort to keep their competitive. For us, one second is short time. But for swimmers, one second is long. He beat up. Second place woman swimmers over 1.75 seconds, even without his hard effort. Why is it so? Biological woman swimmer cannot play against biological male swimmers fairly at all. Is it what Downing City aims for? <coughs> With this word, I read what survivor support group articles article out. It is time for mental health professionals to say enough is enough for the trans deceptions. The trans woman is wrecking havoc on countless lives with relatively few of us mental health professionals willing to call this what it is, the greatest man-made psychologist lie, scheme, and scam ever foist upon vulnerable young people with untreated mental health, mental health issues. Why do you use our text to praise these destructive personal interests? Are you going to use text for any event that just to make people happy? But, just, but what kind of message are you going to send out to the Downing community? especially young people, that who we are looking for and caring for. 
I know. I come all the time for these matters for years. This is more than a year now. But why I keep not quiet? Even though I don't see any change? Because it is my community. And my children will live here. My next generations after generations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so first I'd like to um, uh, say I think it's really great that uh, the young people that are running uh, in this election are coming forward and speaking with the community. I think that it's really great. So let's talk about that a bit. Um, I saw uh, that Mr. Trujillo, uh, over in December, he decided to give Robert Garcia, the mayor of Long Beach, 2,900 bucks. Uh, I guess that was a little, you know, the maximum contribution. Um, so my guess is he won't be supporting Mr. Beltran or any of the other candidates. Um, and that's really unfortunate because let's talk about, you know, Robert Garcia. You know, Robert Garcia is running to represent uh, Downey, Bellflower, Huntington Park, Long Beach, uh, and Congress. He's trying to succeed uh, Mrs. Roybal Allard as well as Mr. Alan Lowenthal. So we had this merger of districts. And uh, so Southeast LA is now with Long Beach. And so we have the most corrupt politician in our region. There's no one more corrupt than Robert Garcia. Um, you can just take a look at all the campaign contributions. Mr. He was like scr just scratching, you know, the uh, the iceberg. Uh, you know, go go to the decade plus uh, years of contributions from Robert Garcia. It's bad, uh, and he just raised eight hundred thousand. Um, you know, so. He's super corrupt. Uh, he has been against the environment. He has pushed unaffordable housing. You know, the, a lot of Democrats claim that they're for affordable housing, but when a push comes to shove, it with the housing that they're pushing is not affordable in the least bit uh, to the vast majority of people. It's only affordable to their donors. <laughs> So we don't want Robert Garcia or Christina Garcia in the Congress. I'm so excited that there's, I think, um, five uh, young um, uh, progressives running, and I think that's great. Uh, thankfully, uh, you know, thank you, Mr. Beltran, for running. I think that's what we need. We don't want any more of this corruption that just keeps recycling itself, you know? Because let's talk about one of the things that Robert Garcia said on social media. He said he was very happy to get the endorsement of the mayor's boss, who is the son of the congresswoman. Oh, and claim that this person is honorable and has is really respected throughout Southeast LA. Uh, the reason why he said that is because uh, Mr. Rick Olivares, the mayor's boss and you know, city attorney to many um, cities uh, is because he succeeded in getting a lot of money, ridiculous amounts of money from these cities. It's a, it's pretty much a th theft. It's theft of public funds. Uh, over in Bell Gardens, where the mayor works, over in Cudahy, over in El Monte, it's been going on for a long time. And you know, a lot of people laugh at him because he's just like an incompetent attorney. Like he lost recently, you know, over at West Basin. Uh, but guess what? He has these connections, right? And hence the FBI, even though, you know, he, he told his employees, your colleagues, to burn documents over at the Central Basin. But guess what? The mommy, you know, Mrs. Roybal Allard was able to, you know, intervene and help him out there. And that's what's going on with Robert Garcia. The corrupt council members and attorneys like the mayor and her boss, uh, Rick Olivares, are trying to get away with their criminality. So that's why we in the community have to just say no, no, no to Robert Garcia. Check out the other candidates. No to Robert Garcia! Thank you. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Ante todo, mmm, en el miri pasado usted me confundió de nombre. Soy Rodríguez. Okay. Voy a empezar con Libas. Libas, uh, tú dijiste de que la ciudad no tenía nada Please que ver con el problema de me. ojos locos. Please direct your comments to me. Okay. Yo, yo estoy diciéndolo a usted. 
Lo que estoy cerrando los ojos para pensar en lo que voy a decir, ¿ok? Por favor, no me interrumpa. ¿Verdad? No. Good evening. Um, first of all, um, uh, I would like to say that in the last meeting you confused me with... Uh, called me by a different name. My name is Rodriguez. And uh, then I want to address this to Rivas. Uh, Luz, you said that uh, I am... Uh, please don't interrupt me. Oh, locos. Ya eso se venía cocinando hace tiempo ya. Ok, Rivas, la ciudad puede poner un stop a eso. Como se lo ha hecho a otros negocios. Ojos Locos had been cooking on for a while already. And you know, Rivas, uh, the city can put a stop into all this. Ustedes saben mejor que nadie que cuando la ciudad no le conviene un negocio le pone trabas y no lo dejan poner en la ciudad. You better know, you know better than anyone that um, if the city doesn't agree with the business, they will put all the barriers to block it. Lo que pasa que a él no le duele porque él no tiene, él no vive, primero no vive en esta ciudad y segundo no tiene hijos que van a la, a la escuela de la esquina. And uh, this doesn't affect him because, first of all, he doesn't live in this city and he doesn't have children who go to this uh, to the public school around the corner. Brincando otro tema, um, Pacheco, ¿qué está haciendo usted con el problema del retún de los 10 mil dólares de, del problema que hubo del caso de Patel? ¿Qué está haciendo la ciudad? Changing subjects, Pacheco, what are you doing with the $10,000 return that was uh, brought back to the city from the... ¿Qué caso era? De Patel. Patel case. Uh, what is the city doing about it? En lo que entiendo que Patel perdió... Fue una demanda fraudulenta. El vuelo terminó así. 64 mil dólares tiene que pagarle a los abogados de la otra, de la otra parte. Entonces la ciudad... ¿Cómo va a recuperar los 10 mil dólares que le regaló al abogado de Patel? Yeah, what I understand is that Patel uh, fraudulently um, lost and that he has to pay $64,000 to the other party's attorneys. So, how is the city going to return or recover the $10,000? Blanca Pacheco, alcaldesa de, de Downey, usted está corriendo por la asamblea de, de aquí de California, de Sacramento. Blanca Pacheco, you are um, the head of Downey and you are running for uh, Congress here uh, in Sacramento. ¿Cómo usted que la comunidad lo puede apoyar a ustedes cuando nos pasamos al 2019? Usted, usted y Prometa votó en contra del control de renta aquí de la ciudad. Uh, how can the community support you when... Uh, while we were in the last couple of years, uh, you, uh, Rometa, voted against uh, the, the initiative against uh, rental increases. Pasamos 2021, cuando el pago a los trabajadores esenciales de 4 dólares, 100, 100 días, ustedes se votó a favor, ganaron, pero ustedes estuvieron en contra. Usted, Pacheco, y Rometa. Entonces, ¿cómo la comunidad puede confiar en usted si usted está en contra de de las personas aquí de la comunidad. In uh, 2021, uh, the, 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 in, the initiative to approve in the basic salary increase from $4, which makes it about $100 a day, uh, you voted against, you and, and, and Frameta voted against it. It passed, but you and Frameta voted against it. So how can the community be in support of you? Lo que pasa es que ustedes, cuando van a sus campañas, Todas esas compañías le donan dinero a ustedes. Y ustedes, favor con favor, se pagan. No pueden votar a, en contra de ellos porque saben lo que les pasa. No hay dinero para sus campañas. What happens is that while you're running your uh, campaigns, all these companies are giving you money to uh, sponsor your, uh, your, uh, your events. And uh, you have to pay this back, uh, you know. Aquí el, el incidente que pasó en la, la reunión pasada, aquí el señor Trujillo, alias Tatis, me, pro, me puso una provocación en contra mía y le voy a decir algo. En uh, regards to the last, in, uh, in last meeting, when uh, there was an incident involving Mr. Trujillo, alias Tatis, and uh, he provoked me, and I'm going to address this issue now. Esto que traigo en la mano son dos huevos. What I have here in my hands are two eggs. Lo pone un ave llamado gallina. It, they're created by a hen. Tiene pluma y tiene alas y cacarea. It has uh, feathers and uh, wings and uh, it uh, emits uh, sounds like a hen. Cuando tú me quieras provocar a mí, 
que estén más duros que, que estos. ¿Ok? Que estén when más duros que estos. When you want to provoke me, you have to make sure that you are more mature than this. Porque todavía te quedan, te faltan mucho, los tuyos están muy flojitos para pa provocarme a mí. Because okay. uh, yours are too weak to provoke me yet. Sabe que eres una rata, ni con los animalitos se pueden comparar. Tú sabes, tú sabes muy bien que tú defendiste de, una, de la Mara 18. Tú lo sabes mejor que nadie, salió hasta en las noticias. Tú eres un corrupto. Y you, un bien corrupto. You are a rat. You have defended people from the Mara 18 and you are corrupt. Now, you can't even be compared to the little animals. Yo no sé cómo las personas pueden creer en ti, en las personas que están en contra de vos locos. Tú cuando ves un árbol caído, ahí quieras hacer leña. Vete a hacer leña para la ciudad donde tú vivías. Tú nunca has vivido aquí en, en Downey. Apenas te acabaste de mudar cuando querías hacer tu candidatura. Eh, I don't know how, uh, uh, how people can trust you. Uh, when you see a fallen tree, you make uh, uh, um, burning wood from it. You um, didn't even live here in Downey. You moved to Downey when you wanted to start your campaign. Y le voy a decir adelante a todos ustedes porque ustedes se cierran los ojos cuando yo le puse la, la, lo que le puse a él. Todos estaban callados. Nadie dijo nada. La otra vez que él me faltó el respeto a mí. And I will say this in front of all of you uh, so that you can hear it. Uh, you all close your eyes uh, in last time when he disrespected me. A partir de hoy, a partir de hoy, lo que me pase a mí, a mi familia y a mis hijos, es, es le, le va a, al señor Trujillo, alias Tatis. Eh, from st starting today, from this point on, uh, whatever happens to me, to my family, my children, is due to him, Mr. Trujillo. Porque él defiende a la Mara 18. Y son, esas gente son malos. Y hay que tenerle miedo a estas ratas inmundas. Que tengan buenas noches. Because he is in support of Mara 18 and those are bad people. No, 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 no. Sorry. No, no, no. Can you please return it to him? Return it. Thank you. <laughs> Next up. I want, also, I want to start off by saying that um, Robert Garcia is a threat to the housing community and all his policies have been against tenant and tenant rights. So with that said, on behalf of the progressive movement of Downey and the tenants of Downey and our entire district, we ask Catherine Alvarez that she unendorse Robert Garcia or she will be booted out from the progressive movement permanently. Second, consider anyone but Christina, sorry, consider anyone besides Blanca Pacheco for the assembly. If you need to do some research and would like to have a good possible choice, I hosted an event for Ana Valencia who came here from uh, Norwalk and uh, she is a very uh, prominent member of the Norwalk community who has worked a lot with the school districts over there. So if you want a better option with, without the criminal background and without the corruption background, Ana Valencia is a better choice than whoever that is up there. I do want to say that uh, it's strange how I predicted a few weeks ago that it seemed, well, not predicted, but mentioned that it seems like all the staff members and some of the elected uh, officials are now fleeing Downey. If you're a constituent, you got to ask yourself, why are they all leaving right away? Why is it happening in such a proximity to each other? Why are they not being transparent on key questions? Some of the key questions being, why is Gilbert leave us? Uh, why was he uh, going to be released? And then why did this council change its mind? Why is John Askewi on leave, administrative leave? That's a good question that needs to be addressed. And uh, why didn't Sean Ashton report that he was working for FedEx in his 700s if he says that he's been working there for seven, three years, I believe? So those are good questions that you should be asking your council member. There's a few lawsuits coming your way. 
One is going to involve housing and water. I just want to throw it here in the pu in, uh, public comments so that I can look back at this moment and throw it in your faces at a f later time. Finally, I do want to say that what happened last week was disgusting. We had an elected official, a council member of Downey, threaten, threaten to fight a constituent on public record during tax dollar time. That is a crime and that is a disruption of this meeting. And the mayor did nothing about it. The city attorney did nothing about it. When a crime was being committed, the police chief did nothing about it. Nobody here did nothing about it. Instead, what we got was not only a constituent having his First Amendment violated, but then the mayor joined in. Rather than holding her council member accountable for a, a, a good transition of a quorum, she started berating the actual speaker. And then when I called her out and asked her to uphold this meeting, she gave me a warning for telling you how to do your job, for asking you to protect the First Amendment and our constituents? It is clear that this council is not only criminal and corrupt, it is biased in the way that it implements its regulations and rules. And we can prove that on public comment. We can see every time when Mr. Herman's being targeted before he even speaks, now he's being policed in which direction he aims his sight or how he gestures his body. <coughs> You've gone, we've gone from having five minutes in the city of public speaking time on all agenda items to having one, four minutes for everything because they didn't want me to tell you guys the truth about how corrupt and how much of illegal activity these all people are involved in. I can't wait till you all see your day Thank in court. You. Cuando quieras, Joey, cuando quieras. Good evening, members of the council. I'm here to, is this thing on? Can you raise the, the volume, please? It's on. Is it? OK. It's on. OK. Yeah, so every, every time I come here to the city council or every time that I think about being in Downey, I ask myself, what is Mario Trujillo doing here? What, what, what's his benefit to the council? He was elected at large. And so then when I see on video Mr. Trujillo making such tacky comments to the gentleman known as El Cubano, cuando quieras, like cuando quieras, like really, is that something that's professional? Is that something that you would want your kids to see, that you're, you're using that type of language here to a constituent that voted you in? That's not something that's even respectable in any way. And so, you know, you're here, and it's so funny because, you know, Blanca Pacheco has her little business down the street, you know, Mario has his business down the street, and so I finally came to the realization, although it's not a realization, that you individuals have private security from Brick Rodriguez patrolling your business, and that's the reason that you're here. You know, and it's funny, because I was listening to Howard Stern this morning, and he said something about actors taking up roles because that role is going to pay them a lot of money. And so I, f I find that, that that's not only in show business, but it's also here in, in local politics, whether it's in the city council, in the state, uh, you know, school districts, water districts. Uh, you individuals are here to rob the cities, rob the taxpayers. And, you know, if you're listening to this recording, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, it's a concern that these individuals are here, all of them. It's, it's a concern. It's, it's a threat to our democracy. And these individuals think that they can silence us with the warnings. And it's funny because, you know, I was reading an article this week and it said how when people go to college, they become liberals. And that's what you guys all are, liberals. You guys are pro-war, pro-privatization. Um, you guys didn't do anything for the rent. And it's just disgusting to see you people here. Uh, it's very disgusting that you, Blanca Pacheco, want to run for the assembly, uh, you know, Christina Garcia's seat, which she couldn't make up her mind, right, to run, for, to run or not to run, right? You're running for that seat, and what are you gonna do next? Are you gonna hand over the contracts to your boss, Rico Olivares? Is, is that what's next for uh, 
this city, for this district. It sure looks like it. Um, it's just a shame that uh, you individuals are here. Um, you know, you want to put a misdemeanor on us for talking out of record, right? But you had your mayor assault two gentlemen that are seniors. And so w where's the consequence for her? Uh, you know, it's always socialism for the government and the capitalist and capitalism for the poor. And this is what you individuals bring to the city, to this district. And it's just contaminated, not only politically, the water's contaminated, the air's contaminated, and the soil's contaminated because of people like you. <clears throat> and I just want to say, uh, you know, I think Rick Rodriguez should release the chickens, all the chickens that he has, so that they can come to the council and they can get the gusanos, release the ostriches, and so they can eat todos los gusanos que están aquí. Muy corruptos, muy malos, and you know, hopefully, uh, Claudia Fermeta doesn't run for a second term because we're tired of her. We're so tired of her. Bad job. Let's recall Claudia Fermeta. Thank you. Okay, uh, seeing no other speakers, I will now close public comment. Uh, is there a motion to close it? So moved. Second. So ordered by the mayor. Uh, now is the time for consent calendar items. Are there any council members that would like to remove or abstain from an item? I think there is uh, one abstention. Yes, Madam Mayor, I would like to abstain from the open session minutes of March 29th as I was not present, I was excused. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Trujillo. Is there a motion and a second to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Can we please uh, vote? I'm having technical difficulties. Um, my screen is blank, but I vote yes. Okay. <laughs> roll call? The consent. Um, can, roll you, call? can we take a roll call vote? Roll call. Yes. Uh, Council Member Trujillo? Yes. Sorry. Council Member Frometa? That's an aye. Oh, it's Mayor Pro Tem Alvarez? Yes. And Mayor Pacheco? I found it. Yes. yes. The consent calendar is approved with Council Member Trujillo abstaining from the March 29, 2022 City Council meeting minutes. Thank you. And we have one administrative report this evening. It's uh, to approve the renaming of a city facility or other site within the City of Downey after City Manager Gib Gilbert Levas. This item was requested by Council Member Trujillo, um, but I'll hand it over to our City Manager Gilbert Levas uh, for a couple of words. Uh, Madam Mayor, thank you very uh, Mr. much. Mr. Greenspan, please sit. Thank you. There's no more public We're comment. Done. Thank you. We're done. Mr. Greenspan, Thank you. this Sit is a warning. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I, I, I want to say that um, as a 28-year public servant uh, doing this job, uh, 14 of them for the city of Downey, the only thing that I've ever wanted to do is give something back to the community in which I served. Um, and I've done that as, as best to my knowledge and best to my abilities as I as I've can, I have, I should say. And um, while I appreciate the gesture to have a facility named after me, I am sure there are many more who deserve this honor uh, much more than I. Uh, my service to the great residents of the city of Downey and working with some of the best employees anywhere in the Southeast or for that matter in LA County is all the recognition I need. So um, while I, I appreciate the gesture, I certainly um, would uh, decline it and I would um, we'll, we'll step away for in the back here while you uh, consider this item again um, I, I appreciate the gesture but um, again there's others that are more deserving than it thank you thank you uh, since uh, this was um, something that was requested by our council member uh, Mario Trujillo, would you like to say a couple words? Or? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I ask that this item be placed on the agenda. Um, 
As you know, the, the Brown Act precludes us from having many conversations uh, with our colleagues, my fellow electeds. Um, in speaking uh, with residents and some staff members, uh, the issue of naming, possibly uh, it was a park um, after Mr. Levas was brought up and I was asked to put it on the agenda. Um, the conversation pointed out that one of the biggest contributions of the Gilbert Levas legacy will be uh, Prop S and the fantastic job that the uh, city did in renovating our parks. Um, and so I ask that the item be put on the agenda for discussion uh, to see if it's something that the council would like to undertake. Specifically, um, I did reach out to the Downey uh, Historic Society. I, I haven't had a chance, unfortunately, we've been playing phone tag, to talk about the history of Dennis the Menace Park, I believe is the name of the park. Um, I, I'm not sure where the name came from. I don't know if there's special significance for that. Obviously, we want to be cognizant of the history of uh, the names of these parks. But that's what the conversation was. That's what led to this item be put on the agenda. So I wanted to open up for discussion if it's, and see if it's something we want to consider to honor Mr. Uh, Levas and uh, the work that he did for our city. Okay, and I know we don't have a staff report um, regarding this item. I'll go ahead and open it up to any comments or questions from my council colleagues. <laughs> Please. First warning, continue, and we will remove you. First warning. I think given the state of affairs we find ourselves in in our city, and leading to Mr. Levas' um, resignation, I I don't support um, this particular um, item. I don't support. Um, I don't support what may be viewed as hypocrisy. And I do believe that the contributions that Mr. Levas has made over the, his tenure in this community have been very significant and I would like at some point to have a special plaque in his honor placed in the Downey Promenade because during the most difficult times um, in the city uh, he navigated, he helped navigate the city through turmoil with um, the Great Recession, the redevelopment of this city, and you know, I I would I would move in that direction, but certainly um, not naming anything, not, at least not in this, not at this time, um, because it would be hypocritical. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Alvarez. I mean, Mayor Pro Tem Alvarez, do you have anything to add? I have sat down with um, Gilbert and talked about this topic and um, the same answer he gave us tonight, that was the same thing that he told me in closed doors. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's not okay if he doesn't want it. I don't think we should um, push for it if he doesn't want it. Uh, I think we have to um, respect his decision in one way, unless there's something else that we want to do for him. So I, I just want to add upon what was said. Um, city Manager Levas um, has did an amazing job here in the city of Downey. Um, he's well respected here in our community, and rightfully so. Um, he's also right, um, well respected um, by our neighboring cities and the city managers. And he's done an amazing job 
Um, if I had a choice of renaming a facility or convincing him not to resign, I would choose the convincing him for him not to resign. I'd rather have him and not a city facility or anything named after him. I would rather have him continue on. Um, but I know the decision was made and um, I respect him. And I respect also his, um, his decision not to uh, rename a facility after, after him. He's, this just goes to show how much of a genuinely good person he is. It just goes to show that he really loves and respects our city and um, he is a man that um, leads with his heart. And so I will respect his wishes. And I also um, am not in support of the uh, renaming of a city facility or, or, another, uh, or another facility uh, for that nature uh, under his name. So I don't think we need to take a motion. No, no. OK. So we can have our city manager come back in. We give him a round of applause. <laughs> City Manager Levis, do you have any comments? Uh, no, I don't have any comments. Thank you very much. So again, I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. We are now ready to adjourn the meeting. We will be adjourning uh, this meeting in memory of Detective Alec Alexis Gonzalez, Southgate uh, Police Department. Uh, officer Shirley Conte, uh, former uh, executive secretary for the Downey City Council, the victims of the Ukraine crisis and um, any lives lost due to COVID-19. A moment of silence. The time is 8.50, the meeting is adjourned.